Tigers and the Arlington Renegades from Choctaw Stadium as the XFL returns at the intersection of dreams and opportunity. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Greg McElroy. We've got Katie George and Cole Kublick down on the field. We are ready for football and an opportunity for everybody on the field, not just today, but throughout these eight teams in 10 weeks. Th that's the key is opportunity. With the calendar in the NFL that was adopted in 2011, there's no more two-a-days. There's fewer padded practices, and the opportunity to showcase your abilities as a young player are fewer and farther between. Now, the previous rendition of the XFL, there have been success stories. P.J. Walker started games for the Carolina Panthers. Taylor Heineke, of course, with the Washington Commanders. So there are so many young players in this league just begging for the reps and the moment they're going to take advantage of it. But there are also some established stars as well. Names like Martavis Bryant, former Pittsburgh Steeler, a guy that's had a ton of success at the highest levels of football trying to break back in. Geronimo Allison, former Green Bay Packer, guy that had an awful lot of success alongside Aaron Rodgers at the highest levels of football, and most notably Vic Beasley, a guy that at one point in 2016 had 15 and a half sacks. He was an all pro, so guys just begging to get back in. So guys also hoping for the launch point, but guys also hoping to break back in as well. So in addition to football, we'll give you access. We'll talk a little betting. Arlington favored by three and a half in this kickoff. <laughs> well, when you talk to the coaches and they're like, oh, we'll see what we got. Let's, let's take a peek at it. I'd be very uncomfortable laying points, especially north of a field goal, knowing the uncertainties of what these rosters might look like. We promised you the access. Here's just a taste of what we're going to show you all season long. putting in this work for a long ass time. Yes, sir. Now we can finally get to hit somebody else, baby. Yes, sir. Hey, hit him in the mouth on three. One, two, three. Hit him in the mouth. That's what I'm asking. Don't get emotionally hijacked. Nope. Let the emotions come out as the game comes out. Don't try to do too much. Let the game come to you. Let the game come to you, man. We're going to play lights out. Got to play for four quarters, though, right? We play together. Don't practice. We in this thing together. Iron sharp as iron, right? That's what we've been talking about from day one. We're ready. Everybody's ready. Y'all good? Yes, sir. Listen up now. You guys have worked a long time for this, all right? Enjoy the struggle. Enjoy the fight. All right, let's be the smartest team out there. Everyone understand? Yes, all right, let's have a great day today. Get a break. Let's go. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, the time is now. The opportunity is here. Everything we put in, let's show them what we about, man. Let's go. Renegades on three. One, two, three. Renegades! Talent in the locker rooms and on the field, eyes. and here's Dwayne Johnson. In your eyes, because I have been there when they told you that the dream was over. But here's the truth. Your dream is just beginning. Because what you're going to do, you're going to come out on this field, and you're going to line up, and you're going to show the world what it's like to be truly hungry with that chip on your shoulder. I know, because I got that same chip. And we're here because the X of the XFL represents the intersection of dreams and opportunity. You bring the dreams. We brought the opportunity. Now let's get to the game that we all love and why we're here today. So I say this to all the players to all the coaches, and most of all, to all the fans. We say this with great gratitude and humility and an insane level of excitement. I declare these words as we kick off our, our season. XFL, let's ball out, baby! The head coach of the Vegas Vipers is Pro Football Hall of Famer Rod Woodson. He's with Katie Jordan. Thanks, Tom. Coach Woodson, I know the heat felt nice. Many of your players haven't played in a live football game in a year or two. There's got to be a lot of emotions. What advice did you give them coming into today? Just don't get emotionally hijacked. Let the game come to you. You let the game come to you and make some plays. We just wanted to keep your emotions in check. 
best of luck today. Appreciate it. Thank Cole. you. Cole. Here with the Renegades head coach Bob Stoops. Coach, 15 practices, no scrimmages really, very little full contact. Describe what you're going to be watching to get an idea of what kind of football team you have early today. Yeah, no doubt. When you haven't gone full speed all out, you know, uh, for five weeks we've been practicing, but you haven't had that live action. So it'll be important to take care of the football on offense and defensively hopefully attack the ball and get them out. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. The XFL is ready. This is the first of two today. Orlando at Houston. Later tonight on ESPN at 8.30. Two more games tomorrow. This is where the XFL lives. From Seattle to Orlando. All stops in between, including Cause the Law in St. Louis. And they're fired up and selling a ton of tickets in the Dome already. But we are ready to go. And if you're familiar with the XFL, you know the rules are a little bit different, including the kickoff rules and so as we line up and get ready to go this is a safer version of a football kicker it is the, the players will line up five yards apart from each other and the kickoff team will not leave until the ball is caught this eliminates high-speed collisions but also encourages the return most of the returns in the previous rendition happened pretty regularly between the numbers. Oftentimes you try to get to the sideline and other forms of football, but it encourages the return and oftentimes leads to really big plays. Taylor Russellino will get us started. DeAndre Torrey deep to receive for Vegas, and the XFL is underway. Can't move until it's caught from the five years point. The side set before he makes it out to the 30 yard line. And that's where the Vegas Vipers will start their season with Luis Perez at a Texas AM Commerce, a well traveled no, 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 no. veteran, 28 year old quarterback. He didn't play high school football, he learned the game hey, of football. That man left, you sit down. Purdue, all Harley, already. Purdue, I want, I want, I want. This, Purdue, yeah. this young man throws a really nice ball. Not a huge arm, not insane mobility, but very accurate on the underneath and understands how he plays within the system. Figures Purdue would be the first play call. That's where Rod Woodson was <laughs> All-American. By far, it's a hit. And he'll keep it on the ground with Rod Smith. And he'll find just one. Go to left, go to left. I got it, I got it. Go to left. Here comes Temple. I got it, I got it. Offensive coordinator, Dwayne Taylor from Alabama A&M, majors in tempo, and has brought a college style here to the pro game. Empty backfield, Perez completes it to the perimeter. That's Martavis Bryant, who picks up the round pick of the Steelers coming out of Clemson in 2014. The big point of emphasis for Vegas is to get Martavis Bryant started. When he's engaged, he's one of the most talented receivers in the entire league. But if he doesn't get some looks early, he might not be able to create that same type of approach throughout the course of the four-quarter game. Over the middle, and that's complete for a Vegas first down. Geronimo Allison. You see already the timing from Luis Perez. That's two throws on second and third down that came out immediately before the receiver was out of their break. Cole referenced the 15 practices, but clearly the passing game clicking here early for the Vipers. John Lovett is the tailback on play action. They get it out to a little screen, and Jeff Bedette. It's taken down after gain of one, but then started his college career at Kentucky, then played for Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. Have my right on on I Purdue. Purdue. I'm ready. Purdue the last time around was a oh, right. was a handoff. Let's see if they go with that again. Hey, let me think. Now they had a fullback. Far, far, <laughs> Love it. Played his college ball to Penn State. No gain. In fact, he's taken down for a loss. Gonna go in the wrong direction. That was Devontae Bosby. 
A good job and 14 personnel, four tight ends, one running back. There's nothing keeping that corner. Bosby home on the left-hand side. Immediately on the handoff, he crashes and makes the play in the backfield to set up third and long. Here we go. Already one third down conversion for the Vipers on this opening drive. All right, Carson. Hey, hey. Hey, 22. I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go. Hit. Pressure coming. He got rid of it in time for a first down. And the Vipers continue to march. That's a pickup of 14. I knew that was not happening. swinging at a slippery rock. And this was a nice job here. Pressure off the left-hand side from Luis Perez. Did not have it blocked. If he doesn't get that ball out immediately against the fire zone, Carolina, Carolina. That's going to be a sack fumble potentially, but he hits it on time and it leads to a nice conversion. Four for four start for Luis Perez. Red. Red. Four different receivers on it. Right. He's now five for five in a slip and roll. This is Geronimo Allison for a first down. A pickup of 19. You gotta love the rhythm that Vegas is playing with right now. Ball's getting out quickly. The receiver's doing a pretty good job on the perimeter. Blocking and obviously an excellent run after catch there by Allison, the former Green Bay Packer. Ozzy closed door. At Cleveland. At Cleveland. At Cleveland. Yeah, come across. I'm telling the running back to come across here. That's Rod Smith. Off of Perez's right hit. Dylan. Always cool to hear the quarterback and the communication between him and his backfield mates. So that's how they come across, so they did. They gave a little token play action. Well covered there by the Renegades. Head coach of the Vegas Vipers. Watch the coach back. He comes back. to hit. Perez with the wall. First down, it's Bidette for his second grab of this opening drive. Great job here by the receiver. Bidette sitting down. They are running a full sprint out to the right, trying to throw a corner out. But because of the zone coverage from Arlington, he decided to sit it down and not run to get covered. It led to a nice completion in the red zone. That's a good job by the quarterback and the receiver being on the same page. Tenth play of the opening drive. Just a great job of dancing, too. I mean, doesn't like it, steps back in the pocket, then starts to attack the line of scrimmage. And how about Bidette again in the back of the end zone in the scramble drill? 
working to get open, and now we get to take a peek at these new extra point rules for the XFL. You get to determine a one-point conversion from the two-yard line, a two-point conversion from the five-yard line, or a three-point conversion from the ten-yard line. And right now, Vegas lined up on the left hash, attempting the two-point conversion. Talking to Bob Soups before the game, he said the analytics are about equal between the one and the two. Last version of the XFL. Perez working to his right finding Bidette uncovered in the back as they were working the scramble drill just a great job of keeping the play alive and what a way to kick things off Wayne Taylor the play caller Cash it in. Katie George is saying about Luis Perez. Thanks, Tom. Luis, just five weeks of practice to get into a rhythm. Great start with the opening drive. What impressed you most? Oh, our guys, you know, lining up, doing what we're supposed to do, and doing the job and winning their one-on-one -on -one matchups. What did you think of the conversion? Ah, uh, missed them there. Should have put it on them. Got to get it to them. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it, yeah. Division two. YouTube videos. Is that how you learn, <laughs> You can learn anything on YouTube, right? I mean, it's pretty amazing, though, and you can see. Adrian Killens for the 10. And Killens gets stacked up at the 25-yard line. And we get a chance to get to know these Arlington Renegades. Starting quarterback out of Ball State is Drew Plitt. Undrafted free agent was last with the Bengals. Beginning of last season was perfect in their preseason open. And he's excited about this, as we said before, an opportunity. And there's history of this league sending guys to the next level. Yeah, I think that this is a young man. It's perfect for him. This league is for a guy like Drew Plitt, a guy that just NASCAR, needs NASCAR. reps, needs an opportunity. NASCAR, they're going quick. And he'll keep it on the ground with Davion Smith. He picks up four. You expect the Renegades to be a little run heavy. Look at you flexing that. You know all your football terminology. What made you think NASCAR was quick? I, I learned it from the last section. <laughs> <laughs> 34 duel. Got to think is an inside run to the right hand side. Yes, you would imagine West Coast offense for Arlington. They're going to be very run heavy early. Pushing forward pick up first down. Talk to a couple of members of this Renegade staff before the game. You're going to see three, sometimes four tight ends on the field. They want to go round and round early, trying to control the tempo. Get to some play action late, G-Mac, to protect this quarterback. Yeah, keep an eye on those safeties, of course. You know the head coach on the other side is one of the greatest defensive backs who have ever played the game in Rod Woodson. You know those safeties are well coached, but I would also imagine those safeties are going to be great to if they see the ball go into the belly of the running back. And we got a flag. False start. False start. Number 77. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's Michael Vanderbilt. Last game he worked was the Rose Bowl. Here we go. Dice left. 300 jet Omaha. One, right? Dice left. 300 jet. 300 jet. 300 jet. That's a quick game. Omaha will be little out routes by the outside receivers. The inside receivers will run little five-yard hey, stick box routes. box it. Box it. Box it. Box. The 300 quick game. Three. It's hot. One-man rush. And to the perimeter. And a completion, but not much of a game. By the way, the, the, the over-under is 35 and a hook. Today, a lot of people might think if you look at the totals around the league, they're relatively low. Why is that? Well, it's because of the running clock. There's not going to be as many offensive snaps. It's basically the clock moves as if a guy goes out of bounds, but the clock will continue to run on incompletions. There's going to be fewer offensive snaps. So uh, I think unders could potentially be very profitable here in opening weekend as these teams try to figure themselves out. An advantage, huh? Timeouts under each team name and an extra 
chef. That represents the challenge that's available to each head coach. They can challenge anything at any time. Anything at any time. So, for instance, I don't know why this comes to mind, but maybe if you're Nick Sirianni, maybe you would, maybe you would challenge a defensive holding call. You can challenge penalties, and it's all ruled by Dean Blandino in the command center. Third and nine for the Arlington Renegades. Coached by Bob Stoops. And that is complete to Tyler Vaughn. No incomplete. And a disagreement on the sideline. Only one foot in, and Vaughn's a product at a USC 28-year-old. Thought he had it. Let's give it a look. Great effort, as you can see, secures the catch, but it does look as though both feet are coming off the ground as he gets control of the football. You see him trying to drag that right toe, and they're going to take a look at this. It's a nice throw and catch, just a touch late. Vaughn's one of the all-time leaders in receptions for Southern Cal. So it gives us a chance to listen in to Dean Blandino back in the XFL command center. My best look, your handheld. I've got control. I've got the left foot down in bounds. Let's go to our line feed and get a spot. Dean, I had some traffic there. I can't hear you. Yeah, Mike, we're looking at the catch at the sideline. I've got a really good look. I've got control, and I've got the right foot down in bounds. So we're just going to give you a new spot. So we're going to go to the 46. It's going to be first and 10. First and 10. It's going to be on the right hash. Right hash. And we're going to go on the ready for play. And we're on the ready. So first yep. and 10 at the 46. You got it. I think it's a great example. Of After review, of play. the ruling on the field is a completed pass. The receiver had firm possession of the ball with the right foot down inbounds. It's Once first down. Figure out the clock. Line. Then we got to figure out clock, location, and sometimes that's what takes a moment or two. And you see the efficiency that the command center is able to operate with. Sometimes, you know, you're looking at a million different looks and it's, ah, you know, I don't know. It's it's a called on the field incomplete. Boom. Dean Blandino, great job of executing. It's done in about 30 seconds. Get a new spot and a nice conversion for Arlington. That was a 15-yard completion to Vaughn's. Keith Ford is the running back. They're going to go to the air again. And they're able to find some running room perimeter and another first down. Brandon Arcanado out of Washington State. Cole, what he got? Davion Smith, nice chip on that big first down play you picked up. How much do you love that coming out of the backfield? I love contact. I'm trying to put everybody on their butt every time I go out there, so got the job done. There you go. Blue the tray right, 96 solid on one, right? But I'm not just short, so it's second and one now. Maybe we see Ford. Hey, start on and then get off. Here we go. Go to the receiver, say start on the ball, and then move off as the tight end shift over. Here's Ford. And he gets bottled up and dropped. Robert Windsor out of Penn State, who retired from the NFL, but back playing again, throws him down for a loss of three. And a great job play side by Windsor. He just wins right inside. The right tackle over pursues just a little bit on the stretch. Windsor slips inside and takes what was a second and one to third and four, but because of the touchback rules, knowing that it really encourages offenses here in the XFL to go for it, I think it's highly likely that this is four down territory for Arlington. Blue 80! Wait, Deep ball, that's caught for a first down. Arcanado second grab. That one goes for 17. Got to be really encouraged if you're both offensive coordinators. I mean, the rhythm that their quarterbacks are playing with, anticipating throws, getting the ball out on time. Look, the strength of both these teams defensively are on the edges. We've referenced Vic Beasley, but Max Roberts, several others that are excellent, really, for both Vegas and for Arlington. The edge defenders are really the strength of both defenses, and the quarterbacks are making them a non-factor right now by getting the ball out of their hands quickly. Ford. So again, not much. Picks up just a yard. So you, you knew NASCAR. What do you think Daytona is? Spring break? <laughs> for you, perhaps, yeah. 
I suppose, but same, maybe some variants of yeah, it's uh, NASCAR terminology. Right? <laughs> right. Fifteen wagon lock bus on one, right? I thought maybe he, with Keith Ford, the way Rubin's racing, that could be NASCAR as well. He's a big physical back. He comes out for a play. He's replaced by Michigan's Damian Smith. Smith's first chance, and he gets hogtied after a gain of three. Let's go, let's go. Hey, Cole, what do you make of the offensive line play so far for this Renegades team? I, I kind of like it so far. I talked to Coach Hunton back before the game, and he said, listen, no full pads. We haven't gone to the ground except for maybe six, seven, eight plays. But the extra tight ends are how they're getting it done. I mean, there's going to be big personnel who really needs right? to play bully ball. Pressure. Hey, pressure. Here pressure, pressure. Maybe they're anticipating some heat Stop. here from Vegas. Push up the right hand side. And there it comes from his right. Got rid of it in time. Sal Canella couldn't complete the catch and a missed opportunity for the Renegades. Great job here by Vic Beasley. Not a guy that's going to drop in coverage an awful lot, but he condenses down, gets that right arm up, and breaks it up. It's a good job there from the former All-Pro. Yeah. In coverage. Field goal opportunity for Taylor Russellino. Had a tryout with the Cowboys before this previous NFL season. This is a 38-yard attempt. And in the wind, he's able to push it through. So Arlington able to answer. Bob Stoop squad is on the board. 129 left in the first. XFL. Game one of the XFL is ceremonial coin flip with Jerry Cardinal doing the honors. And we are underway after the field goals. And another opportunity for the Vegas Vipers now. And Luis Perez. What a story Luis Perez is and an opportunity for him in this league. He's played in just about every professional league. <laughs> Practice time in the right. NFL. On, high, pull in, check. All right. Completed 72% of his passes in a 9-1 to touchdown to interception ratio in the USFL. Hey, opposite. Hey, opposite, opposite. You hear him looking right here and they said, Check, it means he's basically looking which direction they're going to go. He says opposite means you're flipping the run from the left to the right. And John Lovett has nowhere to go. He picks up just a yard. He gets dragged out of there by Will Hill, who won a national championship in Florida. You reference Luis Perez. I mean, he's the spring king, man. The guy has been in every single league, but continues to get opportunities because he's very, very solid. And one of those guys that has a great understanding of the offense that he's running right now under Dwayne Taylor. Shift to empty. Let's see if he makes a protection adjustment. Five parts to hit. Coverage by Aaron O'Dale, former basketball player in college. Wayne Taylor's the offensive coordinator for Vegas. You see Dwayne Taylor right there. And you don't need the gap. Six, six, man. Get in. Get, get underneath 36. I mean, sounds like he's going to have to run something, and, and it's going to be Five some type of in breaking hey. route. And movement on the left side, Larry Williams. Offense. Still second down. A unique aspect of the coach to player communications in the XFL, there's no cutoff. In the NFL, it cuts off at 15 seconds left. Go check with me. 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 going to take a peek and make the play call after they get a look at a picture of what they're doing. And that's how the first quarter will come to an end. Arlington favored by three and a half, trailing by three. One quarter into the XFL. He is the presentation of the XFL on ABC. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC station. And car.
Numerous former first-round picks playing in the XFL, including Paxton Lynch for Orlando. They'll be in action tonight at Houston on ESPN. And Vic Beasley, who led the NFL in sacks as the Falcons made it to the Super Bowl. On the field for Vegas. Third and 14 for Vegas. Adjustment, Ike Ike, meaning it, you're going to block the inside linebacker to the left-hand side. Center goes that way. Schooler's going to overload it to the right-hand side. And they drop Perez on the pressure on third and long. Michael Carrizosa gets the punt away. It's short and low. Did you hit him? Opportunity for the Renegades who scoop it up and get blasted. Joe Powell had a kickoff return for a touchdown for St. Louis in the XFL a few years ago. Loses two on that one. 6-3 Vegas. Ceremony with XFL owners Jerry Cardinal and Danny Garcia. Bob Stoops presents each with a game ball. How great was it for you? Danny's so excited about this venture. Everything first class. Here we go, here we go. Hey, scramble two, line bunch left. Fake 97, keeper right, F slide, on one, right? All right, fake 97, keeper right, F slide. They're going to fake the handoff to the left hand side, bootleg the Move. quarterback out to the backfield on the bootleg, and then you're going to get the F, which is the inside tight end off the ball. He's going to slide into the flat. Pressure, Plick got rid of it just in time to that tight end, but nowhere to go for Nate Becker. Jonathan Hayes is the offensive coordinator for the Arlington Renegades. Sharing that with Chuck Long. Let's go. Uh, tight dog one, tight dog let's, one, tight dog Let's one. go uh, gun dice right, 200 dead sticky. Sticky here means five yard stick routes by the inside receivers. Outside receivers will run. Double drag. Done. Little out Three. routes to the outside. Get it outside in. They brought five and to the perimeter. I think people will be surprised just how calm the coordinators are when they send the plays in. Very calm. Don't worry, their brains are moving a mile a minute. Zone left, out. A, zone out. two jet, jet. Zone out. halfback ram, all go, X right. Reno. Gun trips left, A, two jet, halfback ram, all go, X Reno, all one, right? Hey, trips left. And sometimes the receivers don't listen. This should be a screen. Maybe to the back across should be a screen to the right-hand side. There it is. Room for Damian Smith. Got to keep luck. And on third and long, they don't get enough. Pick up a nine. And fourth down coming. By the way, one of the key rules in the XFL hoping to encourage more returns is if you try to kick it out of bounds inside the 35-yard line, but the ball comes back out to the 35-yard line. And Marquette King, who led the NFL in punting in 2014, was a fantastic punter, primarily with the Raiders, setting a Raiders record, is a guy who could do just that, but he's got to rethink it. Matthew Sexton to return. And that one checks up like Greg's wedge. Good field position for the Vegas Vipers holding on to a three-point lead. And we're back in Arlington after a word from our ABC station. Let's go! Let's go! Oh! All access in the XFL. Luis Perez with a touchdown pass in this one. 
Vegas with a 6-3 lead. Each team with three timeouts remaining. You see that extra chip at the bottom. They also have one challenge remaining. Each side can challenge any play at any time. Go with the Jets sweep. And a pickup of four for DeAndre Corey. Let's listen in to the coordinator. Right now. Sub, sub, right sub, 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 sub. Oh, I need a running back. My running back, go. running back. Devil. Ozzy, 52 Baby. straight. Ozzy, 52 straight. Ozzy, 52 straight. Feels like organized chaos. <laughs> Man rush over the middle, complete. That's Allison. It's a little tricky. Virginia, 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 Virginia. Here, Virginia. Boy choice. So far, the, Boy choice. They've had Purdue. They've had Cleveland. They've had Virginia. Those have been handoffs so far. They stick with that theme and straight ahead for DeAndre Torres. Pick up with six. Talking to Rod Woodson yesterday, he's like, look, the, the thing about our offense is a little bit funky. We listen to the standard West Coast when Arlington's on offense. It's pretty much universal. You know the play calls. Everybody that's ever been in the West Coast offense knows it. But with Vegas having a college coordinator that's really in an RPO background, the terminology is very different, so it's difficult to diagnose. There's pressure up the middle and from the edge. And it's incomplete. Trying to find Martavis Bryant. Cole? T.J. Barnes been in and out of the lineup on the defensive line. Listen at 379. I got to know what you're weighing right now. 358. 358. Come on. Uh, Thanksgiving, I was around 420, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 so I lost the weight. It, took, it was a similar sale for me, but I lost about 70 pounds and got out of shape, so... Go. Good stuff. Barnes, a graduate of Georgia Tech, was in software development. He got back into football because he lost the weight. He got, had to lose the weight to get healthy again, and he dropped all that weight and said, hey, maybe I can go back and play some more football. And here he is. Swing to Torrey. Wow, what a hit. And he gets helicoptered down for a gain of one. Josh Hawkins and Shakur Brown combined to spin it. Maybe, okay. What, after that first drive for Vegas, they went right down the field, but since then, We've seen Arlington go to a little bit more of a zone defense and see Jay Hayes right there loving the stop there in the flat short of the line to gain. Joe Powell muff the previous return. Wow. What a play. But it's going to carry into the end zone, and they'll bring it all the way back out to the 35 at that 56-yard punt. Katie George. Well, Tom, I spoke with Vegas D.C. Chris Dishman, and he told me he's really happy early on with the tackling. He said that was his biggest concern coming in. These guys only had about 15 to 16 practices in a five-week preseason, and he said we didn't do a whole much of live tackling because we obviously wanted to come into the season healthy, so he didn't know what that was going to look like. He's really happy with what he's seen so far and the pursuit to the ball as well, guys. Limited numbers is why health is so concerned uh, such a concern check, check 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 I got Josh Hawkins made that last tackle on third down you've been flying down to the box how much you've been looking forward to this man I'm excited we've been putting together about a month and a half now and it's all coming together with good stuff Agent with the Packers in 16. Hey, we got to go. Jay Toner. Jay Toner. Jay Toner. Makes the two interceptions in the preseason with Green Bay. Nice sidestep. The ball. Did the ball come out? And Ford with a gain of two. Let's look and listen at that hit a moment ago. Led by Hawkins. Hey, Bob. Bob, on that, on that zone to Y. They were in the wind, and he was tight, so it looked like Will tried to get outside. So you did come back inside. Did the ball cut inside of you, too? They said, why Hank here? So his first read is the tight end over the middle of the ball. Finella, he is. Auburn product gets folded up. The pick up a five, third and two. What do you like here? I like going for it. You got two down territory, so I'd run it on first, on third, two. Can't pick it up with my big body. Running back Keith Ford. Jumbo, Jumbo. I call the exact same play. Jumbo. So here comes 
big personnel. Three tight ends in the game, four tight ends in the game. Hey, the Arlington hey, Renegades. Hey, Tyler, run. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Jumbo, obviously, indicate extra offensive hey, linemen as well. Do a final quick, right? Play clock at four. Hand off to the right. Better go NASCAR, Tom. <laughs> Daytona. <laughs> Time not taken. And the Renegades will be looking at a third and two. Sure. Hey, you want the guys to be fired up, ready to come off the ball, but you don't want them to get too eager and jump off sides. Hey. Let's listen to what he says to his offensive line here in critical down distance. This is an offensive line. It's time to shine, Cole. Third 21, short. 21 in the Get an extra lineman in there. Let's go. Fourth. They just change it to 21, hey. thank goodness. No extra <laughs> lineman. Five's enough. Keep him on the sideline. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, listen to me. Green, right, close. 92 blast on the quick. Ready? 92 blast, little inside run to the right hand side. Keith Ford is running back. NASCAR, NASCAR. <laughs> Lost the football. Missed opportunity. It'll be a loss of a half a yard, and that's if they recovered it, but it looked like Ford passed on it. Ball is right his belly. Let's see the interaction between Ford and, and Plitt. See if they discuss it. I don't know what happened on it. We can't say I don't know because then we can't fix it. So I need to know what the problem was. No, you good, you good. Reggie Davis, the running back coach. Good interaction right there, too. Hey, it's on me. Hit me in the arm. Hey, we can't fix it. That's, that's good stuff. Jeff, it, it goes out of bounds inside the 35 and bring it back down to the 35. To put in the Renegades, stumbling a bit. Yeah. Game. Five fires to hit. Hey, hey, I got, I got, I can max, I can max. Five fires to hit. I saw it, I saw it. Yeah, no, that's me, that's on me, yes. I flipped it, I knew I was hot as the guy I was looking at. They both came, yeah. It's great interaction right there. You hear the mic, Mike, slide the line to the left, point to the left, offensive lines going to the left, they overload. He said, look, I'm looking right at him. I know it's on me. I'm hot off that guy. Unfortunately, he was the one that made the play. The interaction, though, between the quarterback and the offensive line. So the previous drive came to an end, and now they get it outside to Jeff Bidette, who has a little touchdown so far today. 12-yard gain. What? Virginia, 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 here we go. I think they're gonna run it. Virginia's hand off to the inside right. Here we go. Fire, fire, to hit. Pressure up the middle. Not much doing. You saw that last punt went out of bounds at the 20, spotted at the 35. Due to the touchback rules, Cole is with the putter, Marquette King. Marquette, just take us through your process. Uh, where you want to try to place the ball? I mean, you get punished for a good ball going out of bounds right there. Yeah. Um, it's definitely I just, I just try to hit my best punt directional, and it's kind of difficult with the wind, the way that the wind's coming at me. So, I mean, you know, most of my career, my goal is to hit the ball as far as I can out of bounds, and it's not that. Got to keep it out of bounds, so I might just start going right down the middle. For the brand, we'll be down the middle. Oh. <laughs> yep. There you go. Second and ten. And then rules in place to try and encourage more returns. Pressure again, and here's a screen. Great play call as Rod Smith got tripped up just, just past midfield for a pickup of six. I'll bring up third down. Trey left the devil. You got to fly that right now. Okay, Trey right, well, we know one round, 86. Dylan, he's going to be got, running got, the fly. Go. That's all we know. Here we go. Learning this Here's offense on the fly here for Vegas. And Rod Smith has a swing route. Yes, a swing route. Yeah. He'll swing on out to the right-hand side. Five, five, six. It's a four-man rush. And 
Able to pick up the first down. Martavis Bryant. Depot. I don't know. Depot, Depot. I don't know why they do. Boy choice. Boy choice. Jay Hayes might be wondering why they didn't pressure if they had it drawn up. Keep an eye on the post up here to the top. Looks like that's what, what he was saying. Might be taking a shot here. Vegas to throw it downfield. Looking that way, everybody covered, and now let it go wide open. It's Bennett for another touchdown. This one from 39 yards. Reyes found just enough time to get it to Bennett, who beat the coverage late. And a reminder here now opting on the last two point conversion attempt to go for it from the five. Remember, two yard line, one point conversion, five yard line, two point conversion, 10 yard lines, a three point conversion. Opting again to go on the left hash, three by one to the right hand side for the two. Perez launches, and that is, yes, indeed, caught for the conversion by Brandon Dillon. The Marion flash, Brandon Dillon is able to haul it in. This was a great job. Play action said we were going to take a shot. Double post. The safety stays high over the top. He throws it to the grab post to Bedette as he's attacking the line of scrimmage, and then the two-point conversion, dropping it in the bucket. That's a great job of securing the catch. Concentration, left foot gets down, and also, too, really nicely done by Luis Perez, feeling the pressure, buying a little time, and throwing a catchable ball for the conversion. Two touchdowns for Jeff Bedette, Katie. Jeff, heck of a play there. How were you able to beat the coverage? Um, just pretty much just staying on the move. You know what I'm saying? My quarterback was just trying to let stuff develop, so just kept my eyes on him, just staying in the play. How are you dealing with the cramping that you're going through right now? I'm feeling good. I'll be all right. Just a little cramp. I'll be all right. Thanks for the time. Right. <laughs> it is cool. It is windy, but it is certainly dry. And the kickoff, nobody can move till it's caught. And bring it out from the five-yard line. Big opportunity, and out to the 35. And the Renegades will have fantastic field position. XFL kickoff which continues on ABC, ESPN, and FX. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and FX. Orlando Guardians take on the Houston Roughnecks. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC. The St. Louis Battlehawks and the San Antonio Brahmas. Saw a bunch of the Battlehawks at the hotel. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern at ESPN, the Sea Dragons and Defenders. This Arlington is the XFL hub. All the teams train here during the week, but then travel out day before the game. We got it. Let's get it done. Wow. Able to thread the needle and complete that one to Tyler Mullins. Nice on those games. The lines, too, on some of those games. Sports betting lines. I don't, I don't know how you're comfortable laying north of a touchdown right now. I'm, just, I, I'm looking at it, man. It's like, goodness gracious. I, I'll take the points all day long uh, this first weekend, figure out what some hey, of these teams it, are. Hey, box it, box it. Hey, yo, I got was plus 140 on the money line coming into this one. Three and a half point dogs, and that makes it good. Trying to find Bonds again. You expect at this point, not much contact defenses to be ahead of offenses early on. You would think, too. I mean, especially with a lot of the strength being in the front seven defensively for most of these teams. And offensive lines, they just take time to gel. So defense is being naturally ahead. Based on the first couple drives, though, I was starting to think maybe these offenses can pick up something now. But the defense have settled in now. I, I like the unders across the board. And I like the dogs. I just, I just, not because I have any, any information. Just because uh, I can't envision a ton of points being scored as they're trying to feel each other out. Spin move by Smith. AJ McCarron is a back receiver. He's going to be at the team hotel this morning. You excited? He told me he has loved it. He talked to Anthony Beck about it at the team hotel this morning as well. Anthony said he has been laser focused. Said he's looking forward to it. First time in a while, AJ has just been the man for an individual team at Anthony Beck is the head coach of the Battle Hawks. 
Third and two. Blast, but you have the option to throw the X down here. Go, the X go. You get one on one, you can throw it down here if you want to. He'll run it. And left him short. Jumbo coming in, folks. Jeff the debt for two long Give touchdowns. Here we go. I'm sorry? Where did I play at? I went to Texas A&M Commerce. Yeah. You know Commerce? 2017 was my last year. I had him two years ago. Did you? Nice. NASCAR, NASCAR. You gotta put your hands up, man. Come on. We need to go through it. Yeah, yeah. We need to get a bigger pocket, okay? You good? Hey, we good. Let's go. He was asking about the exchange. You know? Fire, fire, it's a hit. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
The one thing that we found out very quickly is that Vegas has dynamic wide receivers, and they need to continue to get the ball in their hands. Luis Perez has been very efficient so far, so expect the passing attack to continue from the Vipers here in the final half. Let's take a look at the progressive first-half stats. Luis Perez in that passing attack certainly standing out, 171 yards through the air, and Bedette, the leading receiver with five catches for 74 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Meanwhile, Arlington trying to figure out its offense behind Drew Plitt. He's with Cole. Drew, try to get a little more explosive in the second half. How do your teammates do it? Yeah, we just got to put drives together, finish them, uh, convert on third down, finish our drives in the end zone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Pretty simple, sounds like. Huh? Finish the drives in the end zone. I think that's a, that's a pretty good recipe for success. What do you think, Tom? Yeah. Well, hey, listen, 10 of 13. 8.8 yards per completion so far for Blit. He's been fine. I, I just think that they haven't... They haven't really been able to sustain anything, and obviously critical third downs is going to be massive here in the second half for them to turn this thing around. Bob Stoops won a national championship in Oklahoma. This is his second turn in the XFL. And Rod Woodson, Pro Football Hall of Famer, 17 years in the NFL and a Super Bowl champion. Kickoff rules look a little bit different. They line up opposite each other, five yards apart at the 30 and 35. Can't move until it's caught. And Adrian Killings' return is taken down at the 27-yard line. The under's looking pretty good. Under is strong. Obviously, 35 and a half coming in. Opening somewhere around 38. Dropping quickly with some sharp action. I would imagine, though, watching this game, unders are falling in the next three. I, I don't know. I'm not watching them right now, but my guess is those things are moving south. On ESPN tonight at 8.30 Eastern, Orlando at Houston. Our second game of four this weekend. Eight teams, ten-game regular season. Flint, pressure from behind. Eludes it. And a nice falling catch by Sal Canella. Offensive coordinator is Jonathan Hayes. Stay 12. Let's go. Let's go. Left hash. Let's go. Uh, Trey left. 35 duo. X dart. 35 duo. A little handoff inside. Z maybe. 35 duo. A little handoff inside to the left side. Duo means double teams across the board. Hey, ball, hey, watch ball. these two hey, ball, ball. Watch hey, double teams along the offensive Wait, line. It's a high. What is the Z maybe aspect of the tag? It, you can tag him if you like the look. You maybe meaning you can give him a hand signal and run him on a route. But all that is determined pre-snap. It's all RPO based on where the Richard will line is. Fraction, number 90, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Those are old-school RPOs when you say you got the 92 or a 35 duo, then you have the Z maybe, meaning you can bring him in and block him. You can sink him on the route. You can throw it to him if there's way off coverage. And the X on a now, that's, they've been doing that forever. Here we go. That's going, that's going. Hey. Straight ahead, needing five. We've got four. And that'll lead. Second and one. Damian Smith with the kick. Hey, they take a shot here. Stay 12. Stay 12. Let's go. Dual, uh, dual left. Z fly. Jet sweep left. What do you think AK. it's going to be? AK. <laughs> AK. I would take a shot here, but a little jet sweep never hurt you. You already got him going a little bit north and south. Now you get him going east to west. 12, Adrian Killings is the one they want to get it. He's in the slot near side. He's the speedster. Watch 12. He's going to motion behind the quarterback. Just got to time up the motion and hand it off. Good clean hand. Well defended. But Vic Beasley in Vegas, Beasley turned him around, and it's a loss of three. Really well done there by Beasley. And you can see, I mean, he's engaged one-on-one -on -one with Sean Byer, number 88, the tight end. And he bumps Killens back, and he can't get back. Sets up now a third and five as opposed to a third and one. Here we go. Nice right, two jet, Z, hammer, F, sail, on one, ready? All right, keep an eye on the Z. Two jet, two jet, Z is to the bottom, right here. Hammer, hammer. Here's your hey, Z, right bring there. Bring Anytime you hear Z, hammer, you gotta think he, 
he's going to be the number one read for the quarterback. Pro style offense, long play calls. I called timeout. Up soup said he got the timeout before the flag for delay of game. See Flint having a conversation now. Thunder Bull F2 Z Hammer FL. Z Hammer. Here we go. Gun double left. Two jet. Z Hammer F sale on one, right? Depending on the look, though, you could end up throwing it to the F. Double left. The sail is right down here. So keep an eye on this. If you get a good quality look, you could potentially hit that sail route to the right hand side. Blue lady! Wait, it wobbles one out incomplete. I was going to say, the head number 23 to be 15 yards first down. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 23. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's Max Roberts. Fantastic story. Flag has been against the one season at Maine, and Rod Woodson says every flag on us, practically six out of the seven flags have gone against Vegas. And they got Roberts here for hitting the quarterback in the head. Obviously not a, not a ton of contact what? there, but protecting the quarterback. There, especially around the head of the area. Gun double right tight, Z orbit, 19, Z Philly on a quick. Ready? Hey, this side, this side, this side. 19 Philly, I'm headed off this uh, hill. NASCAR, NASCAR. To him is Damian Smith. Now, pardon me, that was on the sweep again. And Adrian Killings at a UCF. Little action in the Vegas sidelines. Hey, hey, Ralph. Y'all gonna let him clean up the pile like that? You gonna let him clean the pile up like that when he's out of bounds already? Y'all gonna let him clean the pile up like that when he's out of bounds? Okay, all right, no, no, no. They, if they go, no, I'm saying you, if you're gonna let them play like that, we'll play like that. My guys can play like that. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Show me the rules of engagement. We'll engage. <laughs> I don't have him in the zone. For 2 0, please. Oh, he was high in the zone. What number? The center. That'd be Cameron Hunt, 56. Who's the center? 68. What's our number? False start on that. 56. You're the center. Who's the center? <laughs> Cole, False tell who the center is. Number 56. <laughs> Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Center's cleaning his case. They got the number right. Let's go. Rod Woodson. Oh, come on. For the roughing the passer. All the calls are going against us? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Second Lady. and 11. And fit in for a completion of five. Is Sean Byer. Hey, one thing that I noticed pretty early here, GMAC, the pass pro has been pretty, pretty solid. It really, both of these offensive lines that usually breaks down early. I was thought, I thought the pass protection was going to be a disaster. If you want me to be completely honest, I mean, you got Vic Beasley coming off the edge, you got Max Roberts coming off the edge. I thought pass rush was going to be a, a significant advantage. But the offensive lines have held up really nicely. Gun trips right, and it's a testament to the play three, callers. They've done a right? pretty good job of getting the ball out of the quarterback's line hands. Third and six. Lake trying to scramble. A little stiff arm, maybe got him a couple more yards. In the end, it's a gain of two. Well, you got to go for it if you're Arlington, I think, at this part of the field. Let's hear what Drew Plitt says to his offense. Here is, it's a critical down and distance, obviously. Already been stopped on fourth down once. Let's see if they can pick it up this time. Here we go. All right, let's go. Okay? Here we go. Gun double right A. Two jet pivots on Daytona. Ready? 
Two jet, meaning protection. Offensive line sliding the left. Here we go, here we go. Going to the right, and he's starting to the left. That means A, going to cross. Pressure, and it got stripped. Loose ball, Vegas has it. A perfect hop to DJ Calhoun. And a Viper's already up 14 to three. Take advantage, it was Max Roberts who brought the hammer and forced the fumble. Same guy got whistled for roughing the passer. Cole, the announcer jinx there, man. I mean, you'd say the protection's great. Next thing you know, left tackle gets beat around the edge and Max Roberts jars the ball loose. Ball's gotta come out quickly, but those routes take a little bit of time. You think as a quarterback, two jet, you got plenty of time. 200 jet, that ball's gotta come out quickly, but no, two jet, you should be okay. Unfortunately though, for Drew Plitt, Left tackle gets beat, and Max Roberts makes a great play on the strip sack. It was a huge play by Max Roberts, who the coaches Park, Park, promised would have a big game. He was born in Austria, played at Fordham and Maine. Now he's starring on opening day of the XFL, and he's with Katie George. Catching his breath, and rightfully so. Max, you brought the pressure. How are you able to come up with the strips at? Uh, well, we've been working all week. It's not just me, it's the rest of the D-line. It's all of us working together. What's impressed you holding this team to just three points so far? Well, we came in with the game plan, and we expect to be the best defense in the league, so this is nothing but confirmation for us. Uh, what are we working here, Gucci headband? Rocking the Gucci headband, yes, man. I love it. Keep it up. opportunities for the Renegades. They can choose to go for one, two, or three. Bob Stoop says let's go for two. They'll do it from the five-yard line. How about the play by Luile? He's reading it out, making a big play, and who would have thought? What were the odds? Did you check the odds by I chance? did not see What were them. the odds that the first touchdown for Arlington was going to be made by a defensive tackle? Hold on, let me text Doug Kazarian. He yeah. would know. <laughs> I think the fellas at Daily Wager might have just cashed a big ticket. Move. They're going for two from the five-yard line. Shipped everybody over. Now a wildcat situation. And it's kept and taken down at the five by Killens, who took this direct snap. A pick six gets Arlington its first touchdown of the XFL season. Big man stumbling, rumbling. Fighting Pater! And it's a game here in Arlington. Obviously, Lalile gets the Renegades fired up. Brought to you by Progressive. Huge opportunity for the Renegades and Tomasa Lalile. A 22 yard pick six. The first touchdown for Arlington. Kickoff rules, nobody can move until the ball is touched by the receiver. Russellino kicks it away. And from the five, it's DeAndre Torrey. Nice move. And Torrey's still on his feet. He's all the way to the 48-yard line. Huge return and a big return on the interception a moment ago, Cole. Thomas, we've had about uh, seven minutes. Are you still gassed? The big six. Get into the end zone. Some Gatorade there. Tell us what happened. You started lined up inside on that play. Yeah, uh, I lined up inside, and my job is to go out for containers. Really, Willie's, Willie's the one that helped me out. He went in. I pushed across behind him. I went for contain. He brought the pressure, and I just picked the ball off. Farthest you've run in a long time? Nah. Running like that all camp. There you go. Good stuff. <laughs> Yes, sir. Huh? What's the last touchdown you had? Uh, last year in the USFL. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Good stuff. And the Willie he was referencing was Will Clark, outside linebacker. Far, far to hit. Vegas trying to regain the rhythm. Great field position. And John Lovett, Penn State product, lost the football. Scooped up by the Renegades. This is Jamal Carter. 
second consecutive takeaway for Arlington. And they'll have it inside the 40. Dean Blandino taking a close look at this play, see if they're going to review it. Here. I don't know if he still has it. Let's get closer. I don't know if we got anything else. Looking at both handhelds. Oh, that's not going to help me. There's the look right here. He's got his hand on it. This is your best look. It's the left knee. Stand by, stand by. I got that out. What do you got? Uh, it looks out. I mean, called out on the field. I think the play's We're good. Stand. We're good. We're, yep, gonna, we're good. The best there we can go. do with this is a stands. Let's go. There you go. That's... Come on. Tell, tell us what you saw on that play, how you got the fumble. Seeing him coming my way. So I pulled up. He was lacking. So I went and stole it from him. He did. And now a huge opportunity with Canella taking it inside the table. What the fuck To pick up a 20. Now you're thinking he should have taken Arlington plus 400. Hey, go ahead. How about the over? The over has life all of a sudden after he had for the first 30 minutes. Canella nicely done moving across the field. And a little tempo from Arlington. Run it straight ahead with Davion Smith. He gets swallowed up by Robert Windsor. Nice job. Hey, Indy 3, Indy 3, Indy 3, Indy 3, Indy 3, Indy 3. Indy 3. Indy 3. Indy 3. Vegas, a little lost, but a fantastic play on the edge. Some monster had the catch. And Adam Sparks, who played about Mizzou and Louisiana Monroe, was all over it. Yeah, all over it, and a little late action, too. He heard Rod Woodson a little while ago say, hey, we can play that way. And you see number 23, Max Roberts, come in and absolutely destroy somebody right in the back there on the sideline. They're down 10. Led over the middle again. This is Davion Smith. Warren Evans with the tackle. By the way, Vegas without one of their key back end players, Maurice Smith, who's out with an injury this weekend. Will be at one of those safety spots. Great pass for us there from Vic Beasley a moment ago, winning inside. The former All-Pro, a guy that at one point led the NFL in sacks, starting to make his presence felt against the left tackle for the Renegades. 32-yard attempt, Taylor Russellino. And just sneaks in. We've got a two-point game with 6.46 to go in the third quarter. XFL opening with Taylor's presentation. The XFL and ABC will return after this message in a work on ABC stations. Series player 54 chasing the XFL dream Thursday at 5 p.m. on ESPN2. Available to stream immediately following at ESPN Plus. Directed by Bird, this nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight XFL teams. Nobody can move until the ball is touched by the receiver. And on this kickoff, rolls to the near side, but taken down. Moments ago, Katie George was with Dwayne Taylor. Coach Taylor, you got all your offensive players together on the sideline. What was your message after those two turnovers? Uh, just stay together. Uh, bad things going to happen, good things going to happen. We knew that coming in. Uh, we just got to protect the ball. Ball security is job security. So if we do that, uh, they haven't stopped us really yet. we just been stopping ourselves the last two drives. So we're going to come out here and score, execute right now, and go take the lead and win the football game. Thank you. Last four Vegas plays, a missed field goal, a rush for minus four, a pick six, and a fumble. That's not a good trend. But that in motion, he's been their biggest weapon so far. The waggle, here's Bidette coming back across the formation and a huge crackback block. Wow. Kane Sutton absolutely cleaned up. 
Donald Payne. He just delivered a massive blow on the sideline. He's he's chatty too. You can see that hit right there along the sideline. Blasted behind the line of scrimmage. Will Clark the stop. Arlington starting to come alive now a little bit on the defensive side after not playing great there in the first half. Starting to find something here early in the second. It just took too long to get over to the spacing. See that window kind of close up as Perez surveyed the field. It was well covered and a good three and out stop there from Arlington's defense. wants to challenge a spot maybe I think he's looking at it for sure I think he's definitely upset that maybe they were off sides he's trying to decide of course you have that one challenge and you can challenge it looks like it was timed up pretty close and if anybody it wasn't the rusher from the edge it was the guy a position inside and Rob Woodson has one challenge to use so Vegas is challenging that there was dealer. defensive offside yes, all right so here's the one challenge situation. Vegas has called a charge timeout to challenge the ruling on the field that there is a potential defensive offside by the defense previous play is under review Mike, I'm with you. We're looking Reason, at it. It's so big. If it's offside, it's the first down. Yes, it is. You can see Dean. Yeah, anything else down the line? Anything else down the line? Same shot. I mean, I can see. I, I've got him moving with the ball. Yeah. So I've got the ball. I mean, he moves with the, the ball. Coach is saying he had him in, the, the, in the neutral zone at the snap. Yeah, I don't have a look down the line. Looks like he moves with the ball. We're going to let the ruling on the field stand. So we're going to stand here? All right. Correct. No foul. Explaining it to Woodson. That's a defender moving with the ball. That's exactly what I saw. He's seeing the Good. same thing. The defender moved with the ball. You, there is no foul for offside. It's first down. And that's really cool. I mean, obviously the play didn't work out and the challenge didn't work out in Rod Woodson's favor, but either way, that, it's really neat to think that you can overturn a penalty, one that could potentially have a huge momentum shift and a key pivotal first down given up. It's just cool that you have that opportunity to challenge that. It's just something that I think all levels of football should certainly consider move on, move at some on. point. Done. We're waiting. Are you done? And recognizing the high leverage situation under pressure, got away. And it's up the sideline by George Smallwood. Smallwood went over Sparks for a gain of 23. Great catch. The Smallwood able to reel it in, and Arlington trying to go really fast to avoid having another look at it. It's going to stand either way, though. It looked like he secured it, and that knee went down in bounds. Let's check it with Dean Blandino. That's the only thing I want to see at the end, just the ball at the end. It looks like it moves, but I don't see loss of control. Good. 
we have just looking ball. at whether he caught it. Yeah, what we have on the sidelines is a catch and a knee down. You got that? Got hit out of yeah. Bounds, so. yeah, we're just looking at control of the ball when he goes to the ground. There's some slight movement, but no loss of control. We're good. Confirm the ruling on the field. Confirm, is that what you said? You broke up? Confirm the ruling on the field. After review, the ruling of a completed pass for a first down is confirmed. It's about as efficient as you can get, huh? So efficient. And great concentration from Smallwood. You see, that ball is up against his shoulder pad, left knees down. The ball can move, and the ball can even touch the ground, but didn't look as though the ball ever touched the ground. He certainly obviously never lost control. So just tremendous concentration on what was a pretty well-covered pass. Daytona at the Play action. Good. Checks it down, and that's caught by Brandon Arcanado. It looks like a Texas Tech wide receiver it's because he was. Good job there, obviously. Hey, you know, 25 flip. 25 flip. 25 flips, so now they're actually operating off of a wrist. 82 F bang, half back smash on one, right? F bang, half back smash. So, we go, get set. down here to the bottom. Lift to the end zone, a little bit behind. Why change the wristband into the game? Maybe you feel like they're picking up on your signals. I, I'm really not sure. It's usually, if you're going to be wristband, it could be drive to drive. But that's when there's a signal or on the sideline. Texas X snag. College. But go. in the NFL, XFL, you have radios right and in the helmets, so scat. they Texas couldn't necessarily get a it's just got it. on what your situation is. But yeah. sometimes a call could be potentially very wordy, too, yeah. so you'd go to the band for that. Lady. A third and four. Pressure. In and Got to find Smith. Covered by Jawan Johnson. And they ran a little Texas route there, which is great against man coverage. You get that back, you get a linebacker that's running out there. They were clearly anticipating man coverage right there. They got zone. The Texas route runs right into the middle linebacker who breaks it up and forces another field goal. That's nicely done there by Vegas' defense. 25-yard attempt for Russellino. And an XFL record to his name, a 58-yard field goal. Last iteration. for three. This one in Arlington sneaks in front by one with 2.43 left in the third. Good job, for Taylor Good job, son. That's it. That's it. Good job, fellas. Keep it going. Let's go. Let's go. Jolino had a good trial for the Cowboys preseason last year. They didn't bite. He told me that he went to Carolina with 10 for 10 in his trial. Sleep and rain. They pat him on the back and said thanks, but no thanks. Even though you beat everybody here today, we're going with somebody else. They're calling Cowboys, maybe Let's she was go. taking that. <laughs> Let's go! As a Cowboy fan, I'm insulted by that. Katie George. So new. Thanks, Tom. It is new. Your defense coach has been on the field quite a bit here in the second half. What did you think of the stop there? Well, it's, it's a good job by our guys playing hard. And we, like said, we knew this is going to come into this game. It's not going to. It's going to be a dog fight to the end. So we're ready for that fight. And whatever happens, happens. You know, our guys are playing hard. I'm so proud of the way they're playing. Our coach is doing a great job of coaching their guys and getting them ready to play. So I'm just fortunate enough to be able to make the calls. Thank you. Okay. Chris Dishman showed up in Purdue as a wide receiver the first day. They kept calling him in the defensive meeting room. The only seat open was a seat next to Rod Woodson. He said, stick with me, I'll take care of you. <laughs> Been friends ever since. Yadre Torre stopped at the return. Vegas has to find something offensively. They've been a mess the last few possessions. And they were in such a great rhythm in the first half. Throwing the ball over the yard, a lot of guys open, tons of space, but they have not looked comfortable whatsoever here in the third quarter. They, of course, had the bad interception, and that kind of threw their offense into a bit of a funk, and they just haven't been able to really snap out of it. 
The way you do that, hey, quick, easy completion for Luis Perez. Get these wide receivers back going again. That's the strength of your team. Turn it over on consecutive plays. Number 45, Will Clark. It looks like they're trying to throw it underneath him, and he just kind of comes right up field and kind of messes everything up as they're trying to hit Bidette on a little bit of a, I guess, a little slip screen underneath. Empty backfield. That's second and ten. Up one foot. That's complete. To get four yards back, Geronimo Allison. Stack danger. Stack danger fires over. Stack danger fires Even left. Even left. Scat left. On. Scat left. Four. Two under. Stack Three danger. Pump. Hang. Swing. Four. Be outside. Be outside. Out and up, Martavis. Martavis, he just told Martavis a little out and up. So keep an eye out right here at the top of your screen, a double move. The hitch. And waiting for the move to complete. Josh Hawkins brought the pressure. Tough to have time for a double move. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> you heard the pressure. Fire zone coming off the left-hand side. Perez is looking to the right. It was well disguised, but that nickel defender that was over the slot to the left-hand side, he comes late and obviously makes the play. Jacor Brown played college ball at Michigan State. It was in the USFL last year. Vegas gets rid of this one cleanly. Renegades, it's Adrian Killings. It's a good kickoff. It continues on ABC, ESPN, and FX tonight at 8.30 Eastern. It'll be Lowe Galindo, Sam Macho, Taylor McGregor, and Ian Fitzsimmons on the call for Orlando and Houston tomorrow at 3 o'clock on ABC, St. Louis and San Antonio, and tomorrow night on ESPN, Seattle versus D.C. Currently, Seattle and St. Louis Two favorites, according to Caesar Sportsbook, in the XFL Championship. And understandably so. Obviously, A.J. McCarron with St. Louis. Seattle with Ben DiNucci obviously started some games for the Dallas Cowboys. So, when you look at the futures, a lot of people will gravitate towards the established veteran NFL caliber quarterbacks. But, last time around, the favorites were D.C. with Cardale Jones and Dallas with Landry Jones, both of which weren't even starting for their own team at the midway point. So you have to kind of find the diamond in the rough. Last time around, it was P.J. Walker with Houston, and there's going to be someone that really emerges at quarterback at one of these teams. That would be the team that I'd get all over here in the first couple weeks. The Levy's in Raleigh coming up tonight. The next NHL Stadium Series is on ABC. The Capitals and Hurricanes are off at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleighwood, the home of the NC State Wolfpack. It's almost 58,000 fans coming to get the 80s. They're also on ESPN Plus. The 37th regular season outdoor game since 2003 playing at its 33rd unique venue. Oh, oh, Arlington has the ball in a one-point lead as we start the fourth quarter. NASCAR, NASCAR. Done. Well, here's a naive question. If, if everybody knows what NASCAR means and they're going first down and quickly, does that give an advantage to defensive line? You, you'd hope. You would hope that the defensive line is not listening in to something like that. But you can get busted on it too. You go NASCAR, and NASCAR is not your live. You say Daytona could be your live. Those are the two they've used so far. Well, sometimes you can do the fake quick count as well. You have that in your arsenal as well. Maybe that would be Talladega or something like that. So you gotta be careful if you're doing Daytona. Daytona and Sal Canella. Ladies, college. 
ball at Auburn. He's got a first down and a pick of six. The result is a renegade squirt down. 12 in the huddle. 12 in the huddle. Base, base, base. 12, 12 in the huddle. You're 12. That's the personnel. Daffy one, Duck. One. Daffy Duck. Daffy Here we go. Duck. Daffy Duck. Hey, scramble to Daffy Duck on one. Ready? <laughs> well, let's Not, see. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't we know that. Move, we got to move. Move. Oh, this this is definitely Daffy Duck, Tiger. I recognize that. <laughs> yeah, they just running straight ahead, but there's a flag. Oh, uh, they have been lined up. The offensive, the offensive linemen were off the ball at the top. That was what happened when Daffy's bill got turned to the back of yes. his head. Illegal formation, not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. I'm going to call that one goofy because uh, not exactly ideal as far as your alignment is concerned. i got a feeling at the facility that's going to be a very similar name with the second word having a different first letter. Yes, that's well said. Uh, Cole, why is your offensive lineman, why are they in the backfield? Tell them to get on the ball. If they want to oh, pretend like they're wide receivers Willie, and every lineman right. thinks they can play wide out, you know you got to get on the ball, right? Trying to gain a little advantage. Just get a little advantage. Hey, Come on. Come on. Full head of steam. And Keith Ford rips off a nine-yard game. Let's go. All right, let's let's go. Gun double right cut. 200 Jet Ohio. Right, Gun Ohio. double right, cut, 200 Jet Ohio. Cut, 200 quick, Jet Ohio quick, on one, right? Quick protection, g Max. 200 Jet, quick protection, Ohio. You're going to have little out routes right here cut. by the slot receivers. Blue 80! Ella got hold up. They go down the side. Trying to find winning here. What is a quick protection, Cole? It usually means you're going to cut, so you go down. You know you don't have to keep those guys at bay for a long period of time. So some of these edge rushers Greg's been talking about, they've been problematic. I'm just going to dive at that outside knee, try to get their hands down, take away from that speed rush, keep them from getting into the backfield, because I don't have to hold them up for four or five seconds. As a quarterback, you know that they're doing that. Ball, 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 ball. Ball. Quick. If it's not there immediately, Eight ball, eight ball, eight ball. Right. What I got Black 80. I got Beasley and Tom Pendu got to him. First down, y'all. First down. This is nicely done. And you see Beasley at the top. He's going to release underneath. He's almost there and almost makes the play. But instead, his buddy Laurent Stokes was able to drop the play. Nicely executed game along the front. Let's go. For the Vegas defense line. Every point they got, we gave them. And that's the story of the game. Points off turnovers for Arlington. Marquette King was going to get his punt. I got 12. Illegal substitution. Defense, 12 players in formation. I need that ball. 12 men on the field. Defense. Wow. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, not quite a first down. It'll be fourth and two, but still, I mean, you're definitely going for it, fourth and two, knowing that Fourth and two, or two and a half. This is massive, massive two, penalty God. here, possibly. What's the biggest difference between fourth and two versus two and a half? Uh, well, oh, we technically, we two is short. Two and a half is moderate. Hey, but I need to play. Let's go. Play Let's would go. be helpful. Gun double left. Gun double left. Oh. Don't uh, win. Smoke pass. Don't win. Plenty of time. Play clock just started. Right, they're going to throw it here on Gun fourth down left. two. Yes. He smoked pass for no one, right? Got pressured last time he tried to throw. All right. The Z's here at the bottom. So here's your Z. That's where it should be going. Goes the other way. And it's caught. Sometimes you just let the personnel take over. Bonds, probably their best wide receiver. Obviously, a terrific career at USC. You have man coverage across the board on slants. Great man beater. Nice throw and catch for the conversion as that penalty is massive for Vegas on defense. 
I mean, it's an A for, I mean, literally 85 is trying to hold on to him, <laughs> not letting him get thrown down to the ground. Right? Lenny! Pressure up the middle, Flint escapes it. After all, you see the pressure, it doesn't get home. Well protected, by the way, Devion Smith, the former Michigan Wolverine. Excellent job picking up that blitzer. They lose contain, and Plitt gets out the backside. Let's see if he's out of breath right here. Dual left strong, 99 crunch on a quick. Ready? He's a good shot. Guy came in in top tier form. Tenth play of the drive. 99 now crunch, going probably going to be a little pitch out here to the left. There you go. Four. Beats the first man. Touchdown here. Extremely valuable to some people, obviously. You don't have to dance around, you can say it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Go right strong. Took the 34 duo fine. Ready? Saying, hey, Stoops, if you score, you go for final one. Daytona, right? Here's the higher percentage. Right. Here's that duo again under the right hand side. defensive line and linebackers going up over the top. Go duo find again. I, I don't know why they would go Rambo. Duo finds been unstoppable these last few games. 34 duo find on Daytona. Right here. 15th play of the drive for Arlington. Extend the lead and put the over in play. Play action. Big stop for Vegas. Big 
Beasley and LeBron Stokes with the stop. If you took the under, you love it. And a great job. Tried to go with a little fire pass out into the flat. Well covered by Vegas. Nothing there. And the former All-Pro, Vic Beasley, closes on it as underbetters everywhere rejoice. <laughs> Along with Chris Dishman. Figured out they haven't had a first down in the second half. And they got a long field. Especially our first game. And so we just got to keep on punching, man. Offense about to go score right now. We got to keep on doing our thing on defense. Nice job. Thanks. Thank this was the stop. He's trying to buy some time, but he was going to go. Artavis Bryant, the nearest receiver. Five minutes to go, third and nine for Rob Lucy's squad. to the goal. Third down. And Michael Miller. You heard a little bit there of Luis Perez say, I'll be louder, I'll be louder. I'm screaming, I'll be louder. But this part of the field is actually a bunch of Arlington fans right behind the quarterback. Probably the loudest part of the stadium is exactly where they're at right now. I'm going to be saying an offside about Nicobar. That's right. Washington brought it. Not the headless horse. Pressure. Situation, you could essentially put the game on ice if you go for three, yep. which would obviously make it a, a ten point game. Either way, I mean, they got to score and, and get their own extra point themselves. But the difference between, and Coach Stoops told us before the game, the difference between going for one and getting it and two and getting it is essentially the same. So, a little surprised they're just going for one. kicker Taylor Russolino your coverage team is 35 yards in front of you a little bit of a different rule how does that change your process Man, I gotta stick to the process kick the ball through trust the guys on there and put the ball where it needs, it needs to go baby bomb it let's go Russolino perfect three for three in field goals special teams defense renegades allowed them to build this eight point lead hit the over Life's too short to bet the under anyways. You know what I mean? 
Santa just got to send it. something. I mean, they were cooking in the first half. And they've now really given Arlington so much life with two pick sixes and, and a fumble. So they, they got to find something offensively here. Luis Perez hasn't had much of a rhythm in the second half. No need to get in a hyper speed just yet. You got to start putting some plays together and get some of these excellent wide receivers in space. Preseason favorite St. Louis is in San Antonio tomorrow. Virginia, a little RPO. He decided to throw it. I think that's one that he probably wishes he would have had back. It looked like there was some room on the right-hand side if he would have handed it off. Payne knows how to tackle. Third leading tackler in Division I football history. 538 of them he was at Stetson. Southeast Missouri is now playing football. And a great job just not over rushing the quarterback. You saw he got on the same level as Perez. And as soon as Perez stepped up, looking like he was going to take off, he collapsed down, rallied, and dropped him for another sack. of his left hand. Yeah, this was a good throw. I mean, obviously Sexton could feel that defender Hill in there in the middle and that man-to-man -man lurk right there over the middle. Could have very easily been a huge blow up if Will Hill would have seen it a little earlier. Man, he had a huge chance on the left-hand side on the slot fade and he just didn't like it. Big opportunity missed there for Vegas. Vegas will get it away before the two-minute warning. Beautiful punt. Michael Carrizosa is too good. He goes into the end zone for a touchback. We'll take it all the way back out to the 35-yard line. 70-yard punt. Worst 70-yard punt Michael Carrizosa has ever struck. ESPN Plus, it's the NHL Stadium Series right here at ABC. Washington Capitals and Carolina Hurricanes ready to go. It's the shortest walk from, well, the most dapper walk also from a home stadium to a stadium series game. It's literally across the parking lot to Carter Finley. Greg, you know you got a putter like that. You got a hat like that? Yeah, no, I got I, I'm not sure I have the hat. Yeah, yeah, the putter looks familiar. They call us hat. Like a McElroy special. <laughs> Fantastic job by the Renegades defense. Here's Cole. Pitch coordinator Jay Hayes. Coach, now front four is getting pressure like they were on that last drive. Front four getting pressure. What does it do for you as a play caller? Well, it just made it a lot easier. You know, we got them behind the sticks and, and we were able to play the coverages that, that we wanted. Thanks a lot, Coach. Okay, thank you. Well, 14 yards allowed. Wait, well, Luis Perez so, yeah. hang his offense started. We're going to wait till on that two seconds. We might not even go back right. here. Please, he's, he's, making uh, sure he's, right. he's talking to everybody. Hey, we're going to snap it on two, meaning on the play clock as it gets down right there, to two. Right that's when you hey, NASCAR, go on the quick. There you go. Well executed. They can take a time out here. One and 13. Last obviously for Vegas, and with how their offense is gone, they have to come after the offense. The offense is really struggling. So, Vegas won early. It's a 
two timeouts and a challenge. That's what that red chip designates under the Arlington timeout chips. Third down five. The XFL season opener and to the winner. In addition to their game check, an extra eight ball, eight ball, eight ball. thousand dollars per player. Eight ball. Eight ball, eight ball. Hunt. Green 80. It's hot. White 80. It's hot. And we get some leakage on the right side. False start. Number 88. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Tight end Sean Byer. Hey, Your blitz say, hey, we're good. That is a huge difference going from 35 to 13. Hey, Trump. Hey, hey, we go. We got to go. Trey right, 34 duel on one. Ready? Trey, we're good. Wow. I got it. We got it. It is called their second charge. Timeout. 30 seconds. As a quarterback, if you can't let, you're frustrated that they burned a the timeout. Well, I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. Obviously, Flint felt like he was in control. They were going to be at the line of scrimmage. But if you're Bob Stoops, there's absolutely no reason to rush. I mean, you rush, next thing you know, you have a fumbled snap. Guys aren't set. You fumble the handoff, whatever it may be. Call timeout, get everyone set. Calm everyone down. Take a jab first. Let him get across. So you're going to get 14 wide splinter is going to be a little bit of go. counter action. We heard take a jab step to jab to the left and then counter back to the right. There it is to David Smith and he gets dropped. Wow, he had nowhere to go. LaRon Stokes just threw him down. 106 for me. And you're going to see block out right here. Next thing you know, LaRon Stokes, I mean, right up the gut. I mean, usually, if you're going to run it like that, you would put a read, but they didn't read it. That tackle just busted. You don't want to give up a guy inside to block someone outside. You always block it inside out. The tackle on the left-hand side, he's got to be locked on. Stokes knowing that there's going to be counteraction going the other direction, just a good play behind the line of scrimmage. Vegas out of timeouts. Remember, Bob Soups went for one on that previous touchdown. Leaving it an eight-point difference. Okay, King. Gets into that one. Sexton, 22. And up to the 40-yard line. 55 seconds left. No timeouts. No timeouts, obviously, but when you look at it, a few things to consider here. One, the back door is open if you're on Vegas plus three and a half. That's the most important. <laughs> Secondly, obviously, you got to get the drive started. When you look at Luis Perez, the offense has really struggled. Got to get a complete sheet. Got to get positive yardage on the first offensive uh, snap of the two minute three. First one after. <laughs>
Brown adjusting the protection, saw the blitz to the right hand side, then you take a shot, you know you got man coverage. Martavis Bryant, probably one of the biggest names at wide receiver in the entire league. They double cover him, the safety plays over the top on the corner. And that was a good long foul ball thrown by Luis Perez. Chance for the Vipers to catch their breath. So four games in the XFL on this side. Seconds remaining. Aaron and Oe had the pressure but couldn't bring him down. Hey. Thank you, thank you. Double go, double go, double go. Is he waiting to read the safeties? He's not. He's Decision only go for one before for the Renegades. I mean, just pretty straightforward for Vegas. Very, very obvious. I'm still surprised that Bob Stoops opted to go for one on the previous touchdown. But now, Determination. Oh, shoot. We got to go back. Hey, determination, love. Hey, Zuri, Kennedy, love, daddy loves. You got to go. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So you get the option here to go onside kick, or you can put your offense on the field in a fourth and 15 for the 25 yard line. And based on TJ's reaction right there, you get the sense that it's actually going to be the offense for the Vipers that comes back out to see if they can secure an extra possession. What's the higher percentage? I think the higher percentage play, depending on where your quarterback's at and how your offense is playing, I think the offense on the field for a one, gotta have it, fourth and 15, is the better percentages. 12% of onside kicks are recovered by the kicking team. I think you have a better chance with your quarterback on the field than you do with your kicker on the field. So I like the decision here for Coach Rod Woodson to go with the one untimed down from fourth and 15. But it'll start on the ready. So you're gonna have to get, you have to clock it. So he's reminding them about the clock rules. So hey, it'll start on the ready. If they get a first down naturally, the drive will continue, but the clock rules are as follows. So obviously declare down clock it. Assuming you get the fourth and 15. And you watch Payne lined up there. And inside. 
outside linebacker. He peels off, sees it, and delivers the blow that dislodges the football. It was a well-thrown ball, tight coverage. It's going to be, obviously, in a fourth and 15 situation. Allison has both hands on it, one that you'd love for him to secure, but the big hit from Payne forces the ball incomplete. And the Renegades will start the XFL season 1-0. Good job, man. Go, Daytona, Daytona. Daytona, Good job, Donald Payne will play after play in this game. This Renegades defense, which was sensational. They had a chance to go play at Stetson when they restarted their program. He said, I wanted to be in on the front end of something special. He's in the front end of this, too. It's a heck of a game. I got him. Good. Cole Kielblick with Bob Stoops. Coach Stoops, we'll take a win any time, but the operation seemed very clean for your team there. Uh, yeah, we were, were very, didn't execute short yard. It's very good offensively, defensively. Came up with a bunch of huge plays. Uh, yeah, we will build on it. You know, we, this is our first live action, you know, in the last five weeks. So you're going to have some hiccups, but overall it was pretty clean. What was your message at the half? Fall down a little bit early? Just interested in what you told the guys. Well, as much as anything, we, we didn't execute third down very well on either side of the ball. We got hurt defensively on three or four third downs and offensively couldn't convert some third downs. You had a decision, go for one, two, three, uh, later, late in the fourth quarter. What was going through your mind with those options? Yeah, I uh, wanted to get up eight, which proved to, to help us there at the end of the game. Uh, so we went for one uh, to be up eight and uh, worked out for us. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Bob Stoops and his defense were sensational. Two picks, a fumble recovery, three sacks, six tackles for loss. And we get a chance to listen in on the emotions of the winning head coach. Great job. You got it. Get a sack. Come on. Come on. Get a sack. What a fantastic wor uh, job by the defense. Bob Soup's Renegades in the star on that side of the ball. The Mad Hatter, Donald Payne with Katie. Donald, heck of a game. What was the difference between what seemed to be an underwhelming first half and then a flurry in the second? I mean, we just uh, regrouped in, at halftime. Uh, you know, made adjustments. Um, we just wanted to get after them more. You know, we did a little bit more pressure in the second half. Wanted to get after the quarterback. Um, and I think we did that in the second half. And we just made the plays we were supposed to make. You know, we worked our butt off the last five weeks here in training camp. And we wanted to put on a good show for Arlington this first, this first week around. I know you're a vocal communicator that everybody relies on on the defensive side. But you were flying around everywhere. What did you think of your first XFL game this season? I mean, I just wanted to, you know, go out there and show the, you know, to show the NFL, show the XFL, show Dwayne Rock, you know, <laughs> Everybody on this team still has it. Like you said, we def we're all being the 54th man right now, and we think we deserve a shot, you know, on the 53-man 53, 53 roster in the NFL. So this was the first step in that. We got nine more to go, and then hopefully two more, you know, going into playoffs. Well, it was definitely a great start by you. Congratulations. Cole? Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Got Renegades linebacker Colin Schooler here. I'm watching you going sideline to sideline, kickoff coverage. You're going down, making tackles, making plays. How are you able to be so effective today? You know, just playing football the way I've always played it. Um, my first pro game was uh, very eventful, to say the least. Uh, we had a couple injuries go down in the beginning. Uh, guys like myself stepped up. We were a little shaky in the first half, but we cleaned it up really good in the, in the second half, except for that last drive, but we'll get it fixed. And, you know, it's one way to kick off the year. Not bad for guys to bench, huh? Yeah, um, that's the way we practice, though. Uh, everybody gets every, a mental rep or a physical rep either way. So whether we're in the film room or on the field or walkthroughs, everybody's locked in. So uh, that's the result from that. Congrats. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. 22-20 is the final. Vegas does cover, though, and the over hits. Tom Hart alongside Greg McElroy. Zero points from the Arlington offense. The defense carried the water today. Unbelievable. I mean, a defense, and obviously when you're Vegas, 
And and really, for any team that will tee it up this weekend, like it's there's one thing we've learned is that mistakes are going to absolutely pound you in a game like this. I mean, you have two pick sixes. You have so many different opportunities that just fall by the wayside. So you got to clean things up. But if you're Vegas, you're looking at this saying, man, we, we were the better team. We yeah. just can't make that many mistakes. Uh, XFL continues tonight. Orlando at Houston on ESPN at 830. What can we expect for the rest of the weekend? Uh, I think a lot of this. Look, everyone's trying to figure out what they have. All the coaches, they're outstanding in this league. But no one really knows at this point what their personnel is going to do, what their strengths are going to be, what their weaknesses might be. Basically, don't shoot yourself in the foot. You give yourself a chance. So I think that's probably it's going to be a process of feeling things out over the next three games. But it should be awesome here both tonight and the doubleheader tomorrow. We got a full taste of everything, including the alternative onside kick with a fourth and 15 that decided the game, essentially. That was the difference at the very end. Yeah, and how about the fourth and 15? We didn't get a three-point conversion attempt. That no, was maybe next the time. one disappointment. So we have something to come back for next week. We're I'm, excited about it. I'll, I'll be back next week. <laughs> Arlington with the win, 22-20 over Vegas. Don't forget Orlando and Houston on ESPN at 8.30 tonight. So for Cole Kubler, Katie George, Greg McElroy, sensational ABC crew, I'm Tom Hart. Coming up next is ABC World News Tonight on your local news over most of these ABC stations.